Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, what is the difference between at the rate parameters and at the rate data provider in TestNG? Let me answer. First of all, this at the rate parameters and at the rate data provider are annotations in TestNG, okay? There are two different annotations in TestNG and they can be used for parameterization purpose. Both the annotations in TestNG can be used for parameterization purpose for passing the data to the test methods, okay? But the purpose is different. So coming to the at the rate parameters, the purpose of passing the data or values to the test methods is different, okay? Here, we use at the rate parameters to centralize the data, okay? For example, there are 100 test methods. Each and every test method is using an application URL, okay? Tomorrow, if the application URL changes, we have to go to each and every 100 tests and modify that URL manually. That is a high maintenance task. Instead of that, what we are going to do is, we are going to put this application URL in an external file, okay? Like test in the XML file or whatever the file. And from there, we are going to pass the URL to these test methods. So tomorrow, if the URL changes, you simply have to go to that external test in the XML file and modify the URL value there. And all these test methods will get the value from that. So that is the purpose of at the right parameters parameterization, okay? So the purpose of the at the right parameters annotation is to pass the data or values from the external sources or it sent out from an external centralized files, okay? So that it will reduce the maintenance. So whereas at the rate data provider is also for parameterization, but it's not like uh, centralizing the data and all. It's just to supply the multiple sets of data or some data, okay? So you can, using at the rate data provider, we can convert a method to supply the data to the test method, okay? If you provide this at the rate data provider, okay, on the on a particular method, that method will become a data supplier method and it's going to supply the different sets of data to the test method. So this will be useful not only for parameterization for data-driven testing purpose also. But at the rate parameters, the concept is different, okay? To centralize the data, we are using at the rate parameters so that the centralized data, the, all the test methods will access the centralized data from an external centralized file, okay? Tomorrow, any, any data changes, we just go to that single external file and update the data there, okay? That's the purpose. At the rate data provider is to supply the data to the test method. Um, whatever the data you have, okay? Uh, that data, if you want to supply the, to the test method, then you can use the data provider. And uh, if you have multiple sets of data also, you can use, okay? Let me practically demonstrate both of them for you. First, I'll start with at the rate parameters. So here, there is a test engine project in Eclipse IDE. And here we have a sample class. Inside this, I'll create a normal method of required. I'll say sample test method, sample test, I'll say. You can give any name. And here, I'll convert this method into a test method, test engine test method by writing this annotation at the rate test. I'll import this from test engine library. Now I'll write some code, Selenium code, web driver, driver is equal to new, from driver. Then for the mouse, import it, for the mouse, and import this from Selenium library. Then driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Then driver dot get. Give any application URL. Let's say this application URL I am giving. Okay, I'm hard coding the URL here. Tomorrow, this URL changes. I have to come to this test method and manually update the URL here. So in real time in the projects, only one test will not be there. There will be multiple tests. So I'll create multiple tests here. I'll say sample test one here. This is sample test two. We have multiple tests. Assume that like this, hundreds of tests are there. In every test, we have used this URL. Okay, in every test, we have used this URL. Tomorrow, okay, Assume that if you have 100 tests and tomorrow if this URL changes, what you have to do? You have to go to this particular test, update the URL. You have to go to the another test, update the URL. Like that, you have to go, go to all the 100 tests and update the URL. There is a hectic process. So to avoid this problem, what we can do is we can take the help of this at the rate parameters annotation. Okay. So how to take the help? I'll tell you. Okay. So instead of hard coding this uh, 
URL in every test method, what we are going to do is we are going to create a testng.xml file, right click on the project and go to the testng and say convert to testng here. And it will create a testng XML file with this class, whatever the class we have, demo class, package name dot demo. Okay, click on finish, testng.xml file will be created. Just open the testng.xml file. In, in the open testng.xml file, what I will do here is here under the test tag, I'll create something like parameter name is equal to, I'll just name it as URL. You can name it anything. Value is equal to and uh, give the value as the URL, whatever the URL. Okay. Instead of hard coding the URL, you are going to pass the URL from this stng.xml file. From an external file known as stng.xml file, you are centralizing this parameter or URL. Okay. So that all the test methods can access the URL from this testng XML file. But how to make that possible with the help of this parameter? Just by adding this parameter tag, it's not possible. So we have to go to the test method, and here we have to write at the rate parameters annotation. So this is the annotation we have to use. With the help of this annotation, we can access this value of this uh, parameter from the external file and supply it to this test method and pass it to this test method. Okay, Par and the for the mouse imported from testng library. Hope it got imported from testng. Yes. And here, curly braces, provide double quote and mention the name of the parameter. Name of the parameter is URL that we are mentioning it here. Similarly, copy this same parameter and mention it here also because this test method also need this URL. We are not going to hard code the URL anywhere. Okay. We are going to simply pass it or access it from the external file like testing XML file. To get this URL into the script and all, here we have to create a parameter string app URL, I'll say. Copy this app URL and paste it here. Now what will happen? These parameters will get this value of this URL from the test external file and that will be passed here and that we are using here. Okay, here also the same thing. String, can you give any name for this parameter? Test it here. Now tomorrow, if the application URL changes, I don't have to go to the in individual test methods. I simply go to the testing XML file and modify the URL here. I don't have to touch all the hundred tests here. Okay. Simply modify the URL in the external testing XML file that will do the job. Okay. That's it. Very simple. Now, uh, let's run this testng.xml file and see whether uh, this URL is being passed to the test methods or not as a parameter. Let's see two test methods should run. And in every method, this URL should open. This is the purpose of at the rate parameters annotation in testng to centralize the data, okay, into an external file and access it in all the test methods. That's the purpose of the at the rate parameters. See, two test methods are running, and in every test, uh, the URL got open. It's working fine. Okay, two tests got passed. Now there's one more annotation in testng that is known as data provider. The purpose is different. Okay. This also will parameterize the test, but the purpose is different. The purpose is to supply the data, not to centralize the data, but to supply the data. Okay. So what I'll do here is I'll just remove this one of the test method. I'll keep only one test method and uh, even I'll remove this test method otherwise. So here I'll create a test method public wide, uh, say login test for sample. Okay. I'll convert this into a at the rate uh, test. And just uh, write down print statement. Here, I'll provide two parameters string, username, string, password. Okay, like this, I'll create the test method. Whatever the username password that will be, uh, whenever this test method gets executed, whatever the username password that comes to this username and password that I'm printing it here, username plus and password plus password. Okay. Otherwise, I can say logged in using logged in using lights, username, password. Okay. Username and password. Like this, we can write down, no problem. So now I would like to supply the data, test data to this test method. For that purpose, we can use data provider notation. So for that, I'll create one more method, public wide. Data supply method 
whatever the name you want to give, you just give the method name here. And here, I'll provide the annotation known as at the rate data provider annotation. For the most on this data provider, import it from the ng library. And you can give a name to this data provider, say data supplier, okay? I'm just giving some name, data supplier one or something, okay? Now, this method is going to supply the data to this test method, but not now, right away. But we have to write some code here, okay? For that, we have to create a two-dimensional object array. This is the first step inside data. And whatever the uh, number of sets of data you want to pass, you can pass it here, okay? First set of data, second set of data, third set. If you want any number of sets, you can pass, okay? For three sets, I'm creating like this. And here I'm passing username, password some dummy okay i'm giving some dummy but this is a username this is a password this is a dummy username third set of data dummy password okay just for example purpose now i have to return this data okay so this method this method need to return the data and the return type should be two dimensional object array till here good now how to connect this how to make this data provider to supply the data to this particular test method, I have to make a connection. To make a connection here beside the test method, I have to use an attribute known as data provider attribute. Data provider attribute. And to this, I need to give the name of this data supplier or data provider method. That's it. Things are done. Now, multiple sets of data are there. The same test method is going to run three times because three sets of data is there. First, this set of data will be passed to this test method and the Test method will run for the first time. Okay. And this statement logged in using Arun123 will be printed. Arun and 123 will be printed. In the second set of data will be passed again. That the same test method will run for the second time. Logged in using Arun456 will be printed. And again, this data provider will supply third set of data. And the same test method will run for the third time, where the Arun will go into username and 7889 will go into password, and this statement will be printed. Now run this and observe the same. See, three times it got executed. It's the same test method login test got executed three times with three different sets of data. Logged in using Arun123, logged in using Arun456, logged in using Tarun789. So hope guys, you got the answer for this question, okay? The purpose of both these annotations in testng is for parameterization only, but the, the actual purpose is different, okay? There, it is a different purpose, okay? Though they have a common thing like parameterization, but the way of parameterization here is the purpose of parameterization here is to centralize the data to an external file. Okay. And to get the data from an external file like test change XML file into the test method. Okay. So that tomorrow, if anything changes, we can update that single centralized file location. Whereas data provider is to supply the test data to the test methods and also to implement data driven testing to supply multiple sets of data to the test, same test method. Instead of creating multiple test methods, you can create a single test method and supply multiple sets of data. So the same test method is going to run multiple times with different sets of data. So hope guys you got the answer for this question. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.